Hey, this video is for anyone who has ever thought or said out loud, because I've heard it many times, and I just want leads that never runs dry. Don't we all? I'm gonna share a framework that I and my clients have been using that I think that if you only watch one of the videos on my entire channel to change your life and business, this is the one. And obviously the next one and the next one and the next one, because I'm only gonna continue to talk about strategies that work for real people in real businesses and not just theory. The first thing we've got to address is the big elephant in the room, which is that the cheese has moved. What do I mean by that? I'm so glad you asked. First of all, the common denominator across any creator, any entrepreneur, all my clients across the industry, the ones that are thriving right now, no matter what's going on in the economy or no matter who is elected for president, the common denominator is that they all have a brand and that that brand has been built from authentic, organic content. Not ads, not gimmicks, just real relatable content. And there's a big reason why this works because when everything else is fluctuating, like economies, markets, platforms, a strong brand is what's gonna remain standing. And so there's a book that really illustrates this point and the book is called, Who Moved My Cheese? And so the story is about these mice that they live in a maze. There's um, two, these two mice, their names are Sniff and Scurry and the other two named Hem and Ha, which is funny but symbolic character names and I'll tell you why. Sniff and Scurry, they're very aware, they operate from trial and error and they start to notice when the cheese that is usually always there for them in the same place every day starts to dwindle in size. So they adapt and then they start searching the maze for new cheese. Now hem and haw, they're stuck in their ways. They're not even caring that the amount of cheese is decreasing. They just show up every single day, assuming that the cheese will always be there until it's not. Then they're like, who moved my cheese? What an injustice, how unfair, blame, blame, blame. Sound familiar? It's probably Zuckerberg's fault, right? Meanwhile, Sniff and Scurry, they've already adapted. They were prepared for the inevitable. They've already found new cheese, even more cheese than ever before. So the situation changed. So Sniff and Scurry changed. Hem and Haw, they stayed the same. They got mad, blamed external circumstances, starved to death. Just kidding, that's not how the story ends, but it is how the story ends for a lot of entrepreneurs. So when the economy shifts and the platforms go down or the algorithms don't behave the way that they used to, when someone moves our cheese, we gotta ask ourselves, who do we wanna be? Do we wanna be Sniff and Scurry, who they adapt and they thrive? Or do we wanna be Hem and Ha, who resist change and struggle? Because the reality is, the cheese has moved people, the cheese has moved, and it will continue to. And that's why we hear from business owners saying, what do I do and how do I do it fast? What we need to do is not just be aware of this, but be ready to predict and adapt where things are heading, which is why I created this channel for people like us. We are the 1% creators who are doing what the 99% aren't willing to do. Like when there's a bandwagon, we jump off of it. When the 99% follows our lead and catches up, we are already six months ahead. If that's where you wanna be at the forefront, make sure that you're subscribed and tuned into this channel to follow the updates and strategies because here's what I'm seeing and here's my predictions. Number one is content lasts, ads are fast. So in other words, content is deep, ads are shallow. And so there's three ways to make sales. Number one, through organic content. Number two, through OPA, that's other people's audiences and through paid ads. And paid ads aren't working like they used to anymore. So what happens when paid ads don't work? The pendulum swings to organic and consistently through all my clients, all my years in business, the entrepreneurs who are the top producers, despite wherever the pendulum is, is they have a brand built off of organic. And sure, content can be slow to start, but man, once it does, it's like free ads. It's like the train leaving the station, like it's constantly picking up speed. I'd rather have the stability of content that's slow at the start than ads that can be fast to fail. I know too many entrepreneurs that have lost their shirt because all of their eggs were in the ads basket, which they can lose control over. So there's the three ways to generate sales, organic, OPA, and paid. However, because the pendulum has swung so hard against paid, I need to point out to you why this is so obviously critical with ads becoming more volatile and less predictable, not everyone is caught on yet, which means there is a huge biz op for those who do pivot to organic and OPA strategies. 
When you are a valuable creator, you can get paid by multiple streams. And here's one to write down, like tattoo this on your brain. You don't get paid by the amount of content you create, you get paid to the level you get your audience to engage. So what do social media platforms want? They want people to consume their content. What do brands hungry for customers want? They want people to consume their content. What does your audience want? They want to consume content so you can be the puzzle piece to all of these, meaning you have the potential for all of them to pay you. Listen to me. People pay extra to not watch ads. Like years ago, they bought the TiVo to fast forward through commercials. Now they pay for streaming services and ad blockers, but it's not that they don't wanna be advertised to, they just don't wanna be hard pitched to. They want to be influenced and entertained and informed by their favorite creators who they put on a pedestal and they wanna be like. Therefore, direct consumers will pay you. They will buy not just a thing, but anything if they believe that what you offer is a solution to one of the eternal markets, health, wealth, happiness. Now, the ad platforms will also pay you for keeping more people watching your content. Not only is YouTube organically trying to put the perfect audience in front of your content, they will also pay you for it when you can show that your content keeps people retained. And what people are not paying enough attention to right now, huge opportunity is OPA, other people's audiences. You can go to other people's audiences. You can also be other people's audiences. So you could be an, a JV, an affiliate, you could have JVs and affiliates, and also brand deals and sponsorships. Because when brands need to get in front of audiences and ads aren't working, where do they go? They go to the people that have the audiences and will pay them many pretty shiny pennies to individuals instead of advertisers or corporations. People are paying extra to skip ads, but they are more loyal than ever to their favorite content creators. Therefore, brands will pay good money to integrate or really <laughs> kind of infiltrate that audience. Brands will pay millions of dollars to creators just to say, this podcast is brought to you by blah, blah, blah. I drink this shake in the morning and you should too. Like for Tim Ferriss to mention on his podcast that he drinks AG1 in the morning or Selena Gomez to have a Coca-Cola in the background of a music video. But this also isn't just for ultra famous people. It's for the mommy blogger from Ohio with a few hundred hyper engaged followers to talk about what supplements she takes to sleep better at night. Or for the weight loss coach to talk in her content about her favorite electrolytes or the company that she buys grass fed beef from. So these are the opportunities to win here that you can get paid from the customer, you can get paid from the brand to reach the customer, and you can also get paid by the platforms creating the content that keeps customers on said platform so that they can put their ads in front of them from the other brands and you make a small percentage of that fund. Creators hold the most power right now, more than anyone. And if all it took was you creating a video every day, or if you don't like video, it can be a blog, a tweet, if you wanna know exactly what you should post to monetize and want someone to be able to help you to do that, then keep watching. Now, before we go into what kind of content to create, we wanna talk about income. I always start with that first. How are we planning for income? Because when we can reverse engineer and plan for income, we can much easier plan for content, which brings me to my next point or prediction, which is easily three letters, M, RR, monthly recurring revenue. If you do not have monthly recurring revenue, you don't have a business. And that doesn't mean payment plans. Like for the longest time, I made all my money off of just these one-off sales. I had a, a revenue goal that I had to hit every single month to be able to cover my burn, my expenses. And then on the first of the month, I had to start right back over again at zero. Like I gotta keep running to get more sales right back on chasing the carrot on the hamster wheel. And sure, second money is easier than new money. Maybe you come up with something else to offer to, uh, to your current customers, but then you fall into this make new products to sell old leads all the time trap. I used to work for someone like this that she was constantly creating new products to sell her existing audience because she didn't know how to A, grow her audience to sell a consistent product to, 
or B, create monthly recurring revenue from the audience that she did have, and then C, any new audience that she did grow, she burned them out and her reputation because she was constantly salesy. And then because of the demands of production, she, which she couldn't keep up with, the quality just got worse and worse, which ruined any chances of creating or maintaining loyal relationships, which is basically my worst nightmare in a bottle. So the solution is MRR, continuity, like people paying for a membership, um, like a subscription to a gym or a software or an info product or a service. So it took me some time in my business to shift this, but now all roads lead to MRR. Write that down, all roads lead to MRR. So yeah, we do have some one-off products, but those one-off products are like front ends that on the back is, for example, hey, here's this $8 get it done day system. So we help you create a month's worth of high converting lead generating content in just one day. Why would I sell something for only $8? I'm not trying to make a million dollars off of an $8 course by itself, but it's so ridiculously amazing. We're gonna blow your mind that you won't believe why did they give this to me for just $8? Well, it's because on the back end, we wanna make it a silly, stupid, irresistible, heck yes, to sign up for a $97 a month membership where I can be your chief content officer to give you strategies and insights and predictions like these for your business, as well as content scripts, money-making gold mines, and to create content that's gonna generate leads for your business no matter what is going on in the economy, which by the way, if you want that, click the link below to join us in chief content officer, or if you wanna get a taste for it first, check out the Get It Done Day system also linked below. So this is what you should be creating in your business, that all roads lead to recurring monthly recurring continuity. Like, wouldn't it be amazing to wake up on the first of the month that just whew, payments come in and you already know that you have subscriptions built up that surpass your burn, they cover your expenses and leave you with profit. And then all your efforts each month are to fulfill for your happy clients, focus on serving them, and then any new clients that come in just increases your profits. So then you can focus your efforts more on fulfillment rather than burning out on new marketing. Because listen, the content you can create from a place of abundance of like, I'm here to serve instead of scarcity. What can I do to scrape by? Nobody wants that and especially not your customers. So what kind of content do you create? So glad you asked. Disruptive content, meaning every person that you've paid attention to who you didn't already know had an element of disruption. If it isn't disruptive, it doesn't create attention. You're not gonna grab attention by just regurgitating what everyone else in your industry is saying. Like people are desperately trying to create this breakout content that will make them stand out and be perceived among the top 1% creators, yet attempting to find that inspiration by like doom scrolling through the abyss as if that's what's gonna help you find this uniqueness, that doom scroll leads to a cycle of mediocrity. So what is the answer? Leave the town you grew up in. I'm going on an adventure. Every movie, every book, every good story follows a framework called the hero's journey. And in every hero's journey story, the protagonist must cross the threshold and leave their ordinary world behind. There's no victory without this. Like Lord of the Rings, Frodo would not have conquered the ring in Mordor if he didn't leave the Shire. Harry Potter wouldn't have defeated Voldemort if he was still in the cupboard under the stairs. So your next level can only be realized if you're willing to leave your reality. And that might mean the people you surround yourself with or how you spend your time. But the first place to start is with the content you consume. To be a good content creator, you must be a good content consumer. But consuming from a place of studying researching, like when you're, when you're consuming different content, you're expanding your mental and creative boundaries. So find inspiration outside of your current environment, like network in a new community. I learned some incredible community building strategies from a church I don't attend, or I learned uh, retention strategies from movies. What better content that keeps an audience that continues to come back for more? Um, I used, uh, I learned scandalous marketing from the Barbie movie poster or um, content diversification from a food blogger, uh, interactive content strategies from a video game that I am a terrible, I'm terrible at, but I can't stop playing it, okay? So there's so many examples. Oh, emotional connection from uh, Chevrolet commercials. Like there are endless ideas, especially with AI technologies these days. 
I mean, there's amazing tools that everybody can use and everybody is moving towards AI because Sure, it's the path of least resistance, like, oh, AI can help me solve these problems, then I can do more of what I love and less of what I don't love, and that's awesome. We want people to be happy, but it's also going to create this massive wave of AI-generated content. And if everybody is making it, then nothing is gonna stand out other than authentic content. And then when they give up too soon on that, they double down on ads because they've heard the gurus tell them the person who can spend more to acquire a customer wins. Well, not if that spend is bleeding them dry. So create content the way that Taylor Swift writes songs. Like we know that she writes them for herself and the world loves them because they're just genuinely her. So create content as if you're talking to your before picture. It's kind of like I'm making this video as if I'm talking to Marley from the past, telling her what moves to make. And really, this is me documenting my journey. I am figuring things out out loud. I'm hoping that it also helps someone else along the way. If it does, amazing. If it doesn't, I'm going to sleep just fine at night. And that's the mindset you need to have. It also removes the pressure from feeling like you have to create perfect content and then focuses on just creating honest content. If you're scared that you're gonna get haters, ask yourself, did you make it for the haters? No? Good. Did you make it for yourself and do you like it? Great. Creating content uh, makes me think of that quote of, the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago, the second best time is today. Everyone wishes that they started a YouTube channel 10 years ago. The first time I considered starting a YouTube channel was before I even had a business, I was in dental school. I was vlogging before I even think that was really a word of just like my dental hygienist friends on the weekends. It would have been so cool if I would have documented my whole journey of going from dental hygienist to building a business. Like, I wish I had that. I mean, I just know that I don't want to say another 10 years from now that I wish I would have done it and still be in the hamster wheel. And I see this imagery of entrepreneurs like running in the hamster wheel, perpetually chasing and like never reaching that carrot. Someone complaining that they moved the cheese instead of like, hey, stop running, get off the hamster wheel, grab the carrot that's in front of you that you will find has been an illusion that it's out of reach. It's in front of you and available for grabs when you stop, create content, and I will tell you exactly what kind of content to create. Oh, Marley, but what if it's too late? Oh, yeah, you're right. Huh, there's already a YouTube channel about how to find health, wealth, or happiness. Or Oprah already wrote a book, so I guess there's no more room on the shelf for yours. And Tony Robbins already hosts events, so I guess no one has room in their schedule to go to yours. I always chuckle when someone asks me like, is it too late? Should I even do this? They don't actually believe that I'm gonna tell them, yep, you're right, you're a lost cause. There's like no pieces of the pie left, better go home and sulk for the rest of eternity. Better luck next time, champ. There are only two people that will give you the permission you are looking for, and I think that that is your past self who believes that a future version of them is gonna make them proud and the future self who's already done it and is waiting for you to catch up. And it certainly doesn't hurt to have inspirations around you. Like in my office, I have pictures that inspire me. Like I have a picture of the David by Michelangelo, his sculpture. When Michelangelo was asked how he created this masterpiece, he just said, easy, I just removed everything that wasn't the David. And that's basically your hardest job as an entrepreneur or business owner or creator is to just remove everything that inhibits you from making your art inevitable. And I think about the people that inspire me, that I feel like they tapped into that state, that they are what I perceive to be just aligned creators, like everything they touch turns to gold, but it's hard to create that state from scarcity, which is why I wanna help people to see the best versions of themselves and make a ton of money being that person so that with more of that money, you can create more. I wanna build the people that build the businesses that change the world. How audacious of me to say that, right? I know some people don't like it, no problem, I'm not doing it for you. It's only for the people that want to be a recognized leader and build a brand that has consistent profitable growth. And if that's you, check out this video here where I can help you build more of your content lead generation systems and help you to scale your business. Thanks for watching.